Hello, and welcome to quite a special Man's Model Moments. They're mentioned a lot these days in modelling circles, whether in armour, aircraft, figures, or even cars and naval subjects. This company has become increasingly popular with each release. We've seen their products feature a lot on this channel, and I'm continually impressed with not only the quality of their releases, but also the sheer volume of them. And the other innovations they continue to introduce, such as video instructions for their new releases. And what's even more remarkable is that they continue to do all of this whilst being engaged in an active war with their aggressive neighbour. I am, of course, talking about the Ukrainian company ICM, and today I am very grateful for them speaking to us for an insight into their company. So welcome, Valeria, to our midweek model meet. Perhaps you can start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what your role is at ICM. Hi, Alex, and hi to everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm Valeria, as you, you heard. Um, I'm involved in ICM for more than 10 years now, and I'm a managing director. So um, my main task at ICM um, from the very beginning is to ensure that ICM is available in uh, all countries and all possible your local shops. But then um, as the ICM is the family company and um, it, it was established by my father, Alexander Buzin. So then step by step, I was involved in uh, uh, more and more different processes. And now um, I can tell that I'm involved in um, all main processes, including the production and planning of new items and um, sales, uh, exhibitions and so on. <laughs> Well, thanks for that. Um, so leading on from yourself, can you talk a little bit about the, the history of ICM? You mentioned you're a, you're a family company. Uh, there will be some people I expect that know ICM as a, a name and a brand, but maybe not some of the history behind that. So how did the company start and, and develop? Actually, the brand new ICM history started in 2003, and uh, it was established by my father, as I told. And um, that time, uh, ICM had only nine employees or 10, I think. Um, and we started um, from the investing, first of all, to the manufacturing basis, to um, injection, uh, brand new injection uh, department. And th this was the first huge investment of ICM. We had the totally new uh, injection department. And then uh, we invest into the new machine department, CNC machines, which gave us... Uh, great advantage of uh, in quality, in speed, and that was the basement of uh, furthermore ICM development. Okay, so what about the current day? How, you mentioned about 10 people back in uh, 20, 20 years ago or so. Um, how many people now work at ICM, the designers, researchers, and so on? Uh, now at ICM, uh, work involved around 150 people. Um, of course, most quantity work, most of people work at the production in the office, but we have quite a lot of stuff that are outsourced and for different um, project tasks, we involve them like designers, researchers, box artists, box art artists, and uh, so on. So just to expand on that, then, we've seen your recent kits include really nice detail, really sharp molding, you know, good plastic, very clear instructions. So how do you achieve all of that in such a short space of time? Is everything made in CAD and do you use slide molding injection, for instance? Um, yes, of course, everything is made in, in CAD. Um, no, we don't use any slide injection molds. But um, I think the biggest advantage of ICM and why we succeeded in, uh, in all in instruction, details and molding, the biggest advantage is that everything is located under one roof, literally. So all ICM production from the very beginning till the end is located under one roof. And the biggest advantage of that, that all the um, different departments can communicate and co-work together very uh, with a with a high speed and efficiency it literally the all the 3d designers uh, what they see and know how the molds are producing and they know the pain of uh, that department so they can solve this matters really fast same time the injection department 
um, are located literally in one wall with the mold manufacturing department. So if they have some cases, they can discuss it and improve everything really fast. Same time, the modelers who make um, test buildings and see the and they know the some recommendations and offers for the instruction, for example, or 3D or parts improvement. So they can meet literally and make an um, improving and changing in a half an hour. And uh, so I think the biggest advantage and that the um, that uh, scale and amount of new items that you um, said. Uh, this it permits us to for that quality and for that speed. Yeah. So I think you've probably answered most of this question. <laughs> what comes up next then is about whether everything does happen in house. And um, so I, I guess part of that is, you know, do you make your own decals, for instance, or is, is that subcontracted to the company? Uh, we subcontracted only the printing of the decals, the printing right. of the box and the instructions but the design is making totally at ICM. Sometimes, of course, by the stuff that is outsourced uh, or uh, for some special project, we outsource some special people who knows, for example, that aircraft. But uh, we, re we make the all main design in at ICM. Only the printing is making outside. So everything is making under one roof. So... One of my subscribers, Andrew Grave, asked a, a similar question here, which I, I think you've uh, already answered a couple of times there. But just to be absolutely crystal clear, he actually asked, are the molds made outside Ukraine? Uh, and he cited the example that Airfix molds, of course, are made primarily in China and, and sometimes in Korea. But, but well, you make them on house. Right? Yes, all molds that you, all ICM kits that you're seeing, um, each mold are making in Ukraine, in Kyiv, in-house. We even didn't have uh, such an experience of outsourced mold, so no. So one of the pieces that I really like in, in ICM instructions is that you have, as, as part of those instructions, mask sets for canopies and transparencies in your aircraft. But a few people uh, have asked the question um, whether you would or have any plans to include actual paint masks uh, for your sets in the future. I think one user actually said if you did, you'd have the perfect kits. No, actually, we don't plan to um, issue and include the mask inside the kit. Um, it was a big... Um, we had a doubt, uh, should we make a template for the mask or not? But we decided not to uh, because we want... Um, a mutual development for not only for ICM but for that uh, companies uh, which are producing the aftermarket details because I know that uh, building the kit out of box is good but there are so so many modelists who are making not just model kit but some uh, piece of art and they need that uh, aftermarket and very often we even cooperate with the aftermarket companies and share some 3d or some parts so uh, we wanted the aftermarket we uh, like uh, encourage aftermarket companies to issue their products uh, as soon as possible immediately after the, the release of icm kits um, so we don't plan to put the real masks inside okay. the boxes. Thank you. So talking about paint then, um, you don't only make kits, of course, but you also have your own line of paints, mm -hmm. which is pretty unusual outside of much more established companies like Tamiya, Ravel, Airfix with Humbrol, etc. So how did that come about? And are those produced in-house as well? Uh, yes, the paints produced in-house as well. We purchased the raw materials from Europe and bottling it in Ukraine. So on each bottle, there is a sign that it's made in Ukraine. Mm, it is quite unusual, but, um, you know, we had an idea about making own paint lines so, so many years ago, like 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, maybe that time we didn't have enough uh, capacities for that. And now we have, um, actually, I think um, many companies... Um, Many, many manufacturers on some stage wants to um, wants to have the different line of products and there are uh, and the paint is like an one option because um, the bigger companies become they want to um, expand the 
a covering of products. So some companies are making aftermarket products, some of them paints. We decided, we decided that the paint is the perfect line for us because um, ICM kit is not too complicated. So uh, we want to make the model kit uh, rather detailed, but not uh, that complicated with a, with a 1,000 pieces to build it for half of the year. So it's, uh, we consider our products for, not for the beginners, but for the um, like a middle segment, for example. Um, so the paint set we, with which we started uh, is a perfect for that. So uh, you can just purchase the model kit, purchase the paint set, not to choose from the so uh, huge variety of paints, shades, uh, brands, so on. So the beginner or the middle uh, model can be sure that uh, the kit with the same picture and the paint set with the same kit picture will be certainly uh, fit each other. So sort of moving on from that then, one question I received um, was from Dave Evans, WW2 Models, about your paint. And that was, are there any plans to release the individual paints in the UK, i.e. not in the sets? Actually, it is released, but it's not available in UK. And I hope yet we are working uh, on that uh, issue. But uh, you can purchase uh, now, you can purchase um, individual paints from other distributors in Europe. Just check it. But I hope uh, that you will see the individual paints of ICM in UK uh, this year. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Now, Obviously, I don't want to get too political today, but obviously Ukraine was invaded two years ago. Um, the world looked on pretty much in equal parts horror and hope as Russia was fought pretty quickly to a standstill. Uh, and what I myself and I think many of the viewers have asked is, what is it like to operate in a company in, in Ukraine these days? And what impact does the war have on, on ICM day to day? Uh, the war... Mm... The war had huge impact, let's say that. Um, if we're talking about the ICM, um, our production is never uh, stopped. So our production is working 24 per 7. So yeah. uh, that morning on, uh, February, on February 24th, um, ICM stopped totally. And um, of course, we didn't think about any production and any model kits because everyone ran, ran away. Uh, me personally, my family, all our staff, they ran away, including uh, some of our people left even Ukraine and went abroad. So we didn't even think about that because we just thought about our lives and how to be uh, stay alive. Yes. Uh, but then uh, ICM renewed the word uh, on March 12th in uh, two weeks. And uh, the first machine were launched on the March 12th. And um, I want to tell thanks to all, thank you to all ICM teams because all the people went to work and all of our staff came to work. And um, sometimes there were cases uh, when it was dangerous to move across the city and uh, some our uh, people even leave at our manufacturing for five, four days, say, uh, if it was necessary. Um, how would uh, impact to ICM? Uh, everything changed. We just, uh, when uh, personally I came to, uh, I worked outsourced, uh, but I came to work uh, in May and to the manufacturing. And uh, of course, I cried. Because when I entered the plant and I realized that uh, that it is, so it wasn't bombed, and uh, um, so uh, we, we was really happy, and we was really happy to do what we can and what we um, and what we want to do. Um, the all the logistic uh, channels were changed. The supply of everything, of raw materials, of printing. No one courier service still uh, don't work in Ukraine. So in Ukraine, there is no work like any courier company. So we just, um, we needed to decide how to supply the goods, um, how to supply it to the Europe or to the nearest airport, how to, 
um, how to deal with the air rain sirens and what to do when the rocket attacks are, when there's the risk of rocket attacks and uh, nearby our plant, uh, there is a bomb shelter. We just clean that, make it uh, like clean and warm to spend their time. And uh, each time when the air raid started sirens, uh, ICM all stop works and uh, all, all of us are going to the bomb shelters to just to wait. Um, and uh, um, how our life changed. Um, Alex, it's difficult to say that it was, com- it is completely changed. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, I realize that uh, when I am answering such questions, I realize that we so much got used to that. That's it's so became so normal for us to hear the explosions that uh, when I started to think about it, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, it's, it's not okay to get used to that, but we get. And um, it's, it, it became the part of our life. Yeah. I think yeah, we will awesome. realize the consequences of, uh, of how it influenced uh, on the people when it will over. Then we yeah. will uh, trying to pack it to our brain and just uh, uh, only then understand what what is what what was happened to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you for answering. I know it's not a, a particularly uh, it's an easy question to ask. I, I appreciate it's not a, an easy question to answer or to to live through day to day. I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to talk about uh, it actually because I'm sure that we are Ukrainians. I'm, we are so appreciated the, for the help of the whole, whole world, but I'm sure that Ukrainians must uh, talk about it. And I'm happy that you are giving me an opportunity to talk and to remind about that. Yeah, I think it's very difficult for us, um, you know, outside of Ukraine to imagine that. You know, we see things on social media, we see things on the news. Um, but it seems so alien. It's almost like watching, you know, a film of World War II or something. You know, it's very difficult to imagine what that is like day to day. So um, I can only hope that it, obviously, that it ends as quickly uh, as possible and obviously in Ukraine's favour. Um, but, yeah, our, our thoughts are with you day to day, for sure. Thanks. And, I mean, to sort of continue that in the modelling aspect, um ICM have made several models now with sets reflecting that, that struggle of your fighters in Ukraine. Uh, and I believe one of those, the Kozak 2, won Model of the Year Award uh, last year from Model Fan Magazine. What does it mean to you and, and others in the in the company to be making those sorts of those sorts of subjects? Yeah, uh, that means a lot. That uh, really um, you know, I even see when the um, Mm, how to say how the manufacturing department and product department um, what was their mood when they created that uh, they uh, you know they are treated with like with a child um, it's very important you know um, to the each person at ICM because uh, in each family there is the uh, at least one man who is now this moment uh, at war and in the front light personally my closest uh, people from my family and each each uh, family has at least one two or even three men who are there now um, some um, our staff 3d designers and people from the warehouse are at war also now so for us it's like um, the tiny way of um, of how, how we can say thank you, how can we remind the world what is happening now? Because at this moment when we are talking with you, some um, horrible things are happening to the people. And for example, my uncle now, uh, this moment is sitting in a ton, in a tank, right? So it's that tiny way how we can remind the world, how we, how we can... Um, leave, uh, as I'm saying, leave the war war in plastic. I wish to leave the war in plastic. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I wish that someday um, the subjects for model kits, the new subjects for model kits will not appear. Of course, it's not real, but uh, that's, that's how we want to say thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and kind of the the flip side of that, one one thing that um, Jaws eight four eight, one of my subscribers asked, following that kind of thread, is why do you have so many Russian subjects given your current situation? Uh, and I suspect I know at least a partial answer to that, but uh, I don't want to assume anything, so I'll let you answer. <laughs> I, I, I think you have the same opinion. We don't have friends. We don't have Russian subjects. We have, we have Soviet subjects. Yes, we did. And we have, but it's, uh, it's a history. And uh, like we or not, whatever, we cannot deny it. It's the history. And moreover, in Ukrainian army, before the 24th of February, uh, Ukrainian old army and um, armor and aircrafts were Soviet. Before this, before the 24th February, we didn't have any Western, um, any um, military equipment. So everything was Soviet. And still now in Ukrainian army, there are so many Soviet subjects. But still, from 2022, we even didn't take new, we even didn't take Soviet new items to ICM range. If you see, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think a, a lot of people don't realize that you know the Ukraine actually was was quite a large manufacturing center in Soviet times. Um, so a lot of, of production, actually. I, I don't think a lot of people actually even realize that Chernobyl was was in the Ukraine, Ukraine. Um, <laughs> rather than rather than Russia, uh, because obviously I, I'm old enough to, to remember the Cold War and um, it was very much, it, it happened in Russia. Uh, Russia was synonymous with the Soviet yeah. Union. You know, it was just and for seen, some uh, people steal cells. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Now, moving slightly away from that, uh, but still given those pressures that, let's face it, most companies don't have to deal with, it seems incredible that ICM not only continues to produce models, but you're actually making more new tools than long-established companies like Airfix and Revel. Um, one of my subscribers, at Jam J. Ford, asks a similar question is, how do ICM manage to produce the volume of kits they do to such high quality under the challenging conditions that they've been enduring for over two years now? So you mentioned a little bit about it before, but tell us a little bit more about that. How how do you guys do so well? Uh, you know, there is a, a book of uh, Viktor Frankl, uh, who was in a concentration camp, and uh, he uh, said that the first uh, people who were died in a concentration camp, uh, that people who believe uh, that it will end soon. Mm. The, those people who was uh, survived there, who were survived there, the people who, were, you know, who did their routine things. So um, it's awful comparison, but uh, it's true. We are doing our routine things. We are doing uh, the thing that we are that we can do the best. We uh, uh, we can we can produce model kits, and we like that. And uh, that's our passion. That's our work, and uh, we are doing it. We just uh, all the people need to need something normal in their life to go in through it. So if you if um, all of you will arrive to Kiev now, uh, you will see a so beautiful and green city and the life in Kiev and in Ukraine is going on. And you will be astonished at how not only ICM, but all the businesses in Ukraine are working. It's not only about ICM, it's about the Ukrainians and about the people. Um, you will be astonished with the, that the cafes and restaurants are working, the shops. Uh, it's not only work and the new restaurants are opening, the new shops are opening, everything is work, the banking system is worked perfectly. So um, the other thing that it is interrupted by uh, rocket attacks, but um, you will be astonished with that. So uh, it's not only how ICM works, it's like Ukraine works. Uh, we need to we need to work. We have uh, 150 families that we need to pay salaries. We need to pay taxes. Uh, we need to support our country. We have to move on uh, to help our country. So it's 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 normal for us. Yeah, yeah. I think it is a huge advantage as well having everything all under one house and not having that kind of that delay even with time differences that you know companies. I'll take Airfix as an example because obviously they have molds made in China, so they have that that time delay and obviously language barrier, um, and then production in India. So obviously molds have to get transferred around, and of course you don't have to deal with that. So, yeah, I you can just imagine I um, 
uh, I, I don't I can't tell if uh, would ICM be that ICM that is now if we will have production for example in China because mm. it's 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 really complicated I cannot imagine the, even the communication so yeah. that's certainly our the biggest advantage I think yeah so just to widen that on a kind of related note and again I think you've answered part of this already and you it's by no means a question that I think is um, within anybody in Ukraine's remit to be able to give a definitive answer. Uh, but Andrew Grave uh, asked the question, why do you think Ukraine has so many kit manufacturers? Because we do see an awful lot of kit manufacturers, you know, very high quality, like Miniart, of course, have relocated some of their production to Poland. Uh, but there's a lot of Ukrainian um, kit manufacturers. Why do you think that is? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Really? I mean, from my point of view, I, I think from what you've just said, that kind of spirit of, of carrying on and, you know, doing things, I think is testament to part of that. Um, so I think maybe, Andrew, part of the uh, the answer uh, to the question is, is in that. But... Okay, I, or maybe, you know, it is related to the Soviet history of Ukraine um, as uh, there was not so uh, much, not so many different entertainment. And the modeling, in, um, as I can assume, the modeling was not so dangerous uh, in point of view of governments, of Soviet governments. So uh, the people are building plastic model kits, plastic details, so nice, okay. So um, many of our customers um, that are now returning to model kits building and they are, uh, the first they are worth, oh, I made it, I did it when I was a child with my father. So yeah. um, maybe it is related to that Soviet past history, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I mean, we do see a huge amount of manufacturers, um, I think starting in the 90s with the aftermarket in the Czech Republic, in Poland as well, you know, in former Warsaw Pact countries. So maybe onto something there. So, Okay, so I, I want to dig a little bit more into how ICM works and, and maybe thinks, uh, because we're seeing some... I think genuinely innovative things come from you as a company uh, that a lot of us would like to see other companies uh, adopt as well. Um, things like we mentioned the, the mask templates and the instructions, um, particularly for me, the new animated video instructions you're making, I think are great. How did you come up with these? And, and do you have other further plans for, for more innovation in the future? Um, how ICM thinks and how ICM uh, works, uh, we work uh, rather fast. Uh, the same things what with the video instructions. Uh, we had such offer from uh, the staff that work, and um, uh, as we are the family company, uh, my uh, brother, my uh, younger brother, is making uh, with all video instruction that you see. Yeah. So um, he just offered us, look, I can do this. Uh, we just uh, <laughs> looked at it. And it's, it was really nice, and okay, wow. Um, can we do it one, two, three per month? Uh, he said, uh, yes, we can. I'll try. And he was improved in that step by step. And now it, it's really huge and great result. And many people like that. So it worked like that. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, please thank your brother for, <laughs> for innovating. I tell you. Hi, Badan. I'm sure you will uh, watch it. <laughs> Now, ICM produces a pretty wide range of subjects, uh, often slightly unusual, like the recent Mobile Field Chapel, which um, I've been unreasonably um, excited about. Uh, I don't, can't quite put my finger on why, but I just think it's, it's a really neat thing. Um, but you've also covered some you know, pretty major mainstream subjects like your B26 Marauder that's just, just come out. How do you decide which subjects to produce? And is there any scope for input from the modeling community at large? Um, how we decide? Um, I think uh, one of the advantages of ICM is also the diversity range. And uh, if you will, um, when if you go back to uh, the first catalogs of ICM, which was in 2005, you will also, you will also see that the even that time, the range was so unusual. It um, so um, which is uh, it also our advantage. We are brave in choosing of subjects. So uh, and we try and of course to balance it with something unusual, 
uh, which will be bestsellers for sure, for example. And uh, we try to balance it with some things that are really expected on the market. Um, so like that. Okay. So of course, I, a lot of the questions that I got from my, my viewers and subscribers um, were the inevitable questions uh, about future releases. So uh, I appreciate you probably won't be able to answer most of them. Um, but one was related to the B26 uh, from Dave Plastic Model Reviews. Uh, and Dave, I can see you're not subscribed. So go ahead and subscribe now because I have asked your question. <laughs> um, but are there any plans to do a 132nd scale version of the B26? No. Um, no. Um, <laughs> That's no. a very good, good definitive no. answer. <laughs> no, for sure. You know, we don't have such big spaces, such big rooms in our production. All the, all the biggest rooms are placed by Sikorsky, so there is no big space at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so I was also um, quite curious if other bombers uh, will be introduced in the same way that Dave was. Um, and there's a similar question uh, that, that kind of came from both myself and also uh, Sop Drake, who is subbed. Thank you for that. Subtrake. Um, could ICM do a larger scale, like 148 scale, Handley Page Hampton, kind of similar aircraft to the Beaufort? Uh, he says, I think they would be the perfect company to produce it. Airfix seem to have dropped the ball on this one. So. Um, okay. Uh, I will give you now the opportunity. Uh, you wanted to know how ICM works and how ICM thinks. So I will show you now how ICM thinks. Um, <laughs> I saw that comment. Uh, under your post on YouTube and um, literally yesterday and uh, one hour ago we had an internal meeting uh, considering the subject and um, of course the final decision about the production is taken by uh, our CEO by yeah. Mr. Alexander Budin of course by father and uh, we had yesterday the meeting and today we gather all the products department all historicals and modelists uh, to analyze this matter and um, I can tell you that yes we will do it in uh, 2025 we just took the decision one hour ago wow yeah <laughs> that's impressive well I think you will have a, uh, a guaranteed slew of people signing up right now for that one <laughs> yeah. yeah so yes it will be in the 148 scale next year wow Amazing. And actually, on these meetings, we just discussed some surprise item for 2024 for the second part of the year, but I uh, was told not to discuss that, so I'm not discussing it. Well, the fact that you've mentioned it even, I think, is... Uh, I mean, we've seen Airfix kind of do this, um, but they scale back their announcements in January. So I think for you to have already announced a whole bunch more announcements than than Airfix or a lot of companies and so you've got some surprises as well is uh, that's quite a treat I think for a lot of people <laughs> so just moving to the distribution side of things then you have importers of your kits in various countries including of course the UK we've also seen Revell reboxing some of your recent kits too so how does that arrangement work and are we like to see that continue and expand or you know, do we see that happening with other companies as well no, oh, thank you for the question, Alex, but for obvious reason, I cannot discuss it. So uh, it works, but everything <laughs> that I can tell. Fair enough. <laughs> so that's the, the current state then of ICM. Uh, what do you plan for the future? I mean, you've mentioned uh, and hinted a, a few things there, but what can we expect to see from you, you know, in the next few years in general terms, obviously? Um, in general terms, um, the development. And, um, the improving of um, every tiny detail that we can. Um, usually we started to make the plan for next year in around the May or June, uh, but uh, this year we have already started to make the plan for 2025. Um, I think you will see many um, like surprises from ICM. I really uh, think that um, many people and many um, like uh, YouTube channels or many magazines pay attention to ICM and to many Ukrainian companies now. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I don't know how it will sound, but it is our opportunity to show you that uh, you can support ICM not only because we are from Ukraine. Yes, we are from Ukraine and we are struggling, but we are doing quite a good product and we are really um, patient about it. We like and love things that we are doing. So we are really like um, encourage what, how, um, how more and how much I know how uh, how um we are really um, we are really in inco- it's really in we are really encouraged to check um to which level we can improve more and more. So um, I'm sure that um, uh, we will uh, in the nearest, for example, three years. I'm sure that we will cover so unusual subjects. I'm sure that we will cover um, that very. Um, common subject that you already know and many manufacturers did, but we will choose that, for example, different scales or make it in our ICM quality. So I'm sure that he, it will be interesting and I'm sure that it will be interesting next three or five years. But the same times, you know, um, it's rather controversial to plan because uh, at uh, same time when we can't plan not anything uh, till the next Monday because we don't know uh, um, what will be next Monday and same time we are planning uh, our next three and five years and want to uh, release this item and want to uh, go and release. So it's controversial for us, but we are building the big plan. So to have a two-stage mind. It's like... Yeah, <laughs> it's really that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... ICM have also been quite active in embracing technology, both, as you say, in the physical production of, of your models and improving those details and things, but also in your digital marketing. You mentioned social media, engaging YouTube creators, obviously, like today, for example. But is that something you see continuing expanding? Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm guessing the answer from uh, what you've just been saying. <laughs> yes, we will do, sure. Um, the thing that I can tell you in June, we will uh, uh, show you the first drop of uh, merch of the T-shirts of some brand the ICM stuff. And I'm sure that you will like it. Um, we it. just uh, really pay huge much um, efforts to create a, the, the high quality and maybe. Um, and we plan to make uh, to issue some drops of uh, ICM clothes and stuff. Uh, we. Of course, we will uh, improve all our social medias, and that's what we are doing. The latest time, we just uh, ICM now is on a TikTok. Just uh, subscribe, and uh, uh, we wanted to um, be involved more in a visual contact. We want to show you how it is assembled, how um, how it is painted, and how it is fitted. So yes, for sure, we'll develop in that. Yeah, I've, I have noticed uh, quite a few of your shorts popping up on my feed recently. Um, so if you're not already subscribed to the ICM channel, make sure you click that. I'll put a link in the uh, the video description below because um, there's some really nice little, little pieces there. So I, I've asked you a lot of questions and you've given me a, a lot of really great answers, Valeria. So thank you. But is there anything else you, you'd like to, to say or any questions you'd like me to ask the community? I want to tell uh, to say thank you to everyone. Um, the first thing that I uh, was told by marketing team to ask guys, we are planning the 2025. Please ask, uh, please uh, send us your offers, your wishes, what you want to see at ICM range in 2025, and those uh, which uh, wishes we will choose and put in our catalog. We'll receive uh, the free items of that subject. Uh, the first of all, uh, yeah. Uh, the yeah. second, I want to. Uh, the Hadley Page Hampton was completely my idea. Oh. Okay, you will receive it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> the second one, I want to tell that ICM has an after sale service. And um, that means that uh, we guarantee that you will end your model, finish your model kit in any way. That means that we. Uh, send the free replacement parts or decals to you directly, even if you broke something by yourself. The only uh, thing that uh, the purchase must be done from uh, official distributor. There are two official distributors in the United Kingdom, so it's not so difficult. 
So um, I just go to our website if you have any some some things with the, your model kit or just some uh, suggestions about future releases or you just want to talk with ICM, just write to our uh, support email and we will be in touch with you. Uh, that I wanted to talk to say. Thanks. Okay. Well, I, I can only say thank you, Valeria. I, I think um, you mentioned a couple of things there about um, you know ICM and people buying kits, um, you know, because they're high quality rather than Ukrainian. I, I think ICM have made their mark on the modeling community by the quality of their their kits. I think people have become more aware um, that they are a Ukrainian manufacturer because of the events of the last couple of years. Um, and I think we've become more aware of the amount and the quality of Ukrainian manufacturers in that time, kind of because of the the war uh, and the kind of highlight on that. Um, but I don't think in any way that um, people are buying ICM kits as, if you like, I don't want to, I don't mean this derogatorily, but like as a, a sort of a, a sympathy purchase. Um, I think it is because of the quality uh, of the kits that, that you produce from my, my point of view. Um, I don't want to sound like a, a sycophant uh, either, um, you know. The but I will say that I have had a hundred percent success rate with your your products. I haven't had uh, one QC issue uh, with any of your kits, which again I think is a is a testament um, to your production uh, and manufacturing capabilities. So so thank you for that, and please pass my thanks on to all the people that, that thank you, did, thank do that. You. And I also want to say thank you. I of course all our company watched your video about who is the best manufacturer, and I want to say that you are a really really brave uh, person to go to the, that minefield and to just. <laughs> say the fans of one or another brand that their favorite brand uh, doing something wrong <laughs> or <laughs> more than another but i uh, re really appreciate your uh, points and uh, we analyzed that, that video and i'm sure that that weak point that you um said will be our strength point someday absolutely absolutely well thank you so much for your time valeria um I wish you all the best with ICM's future production. Uh, thank you for the little uh, tidbits of information that we didn't know uh, before the video. That was that was great. And uh, I hope that the, the conflict um, comes to a, a swift resolution, again, in Ukraine's favor as quickly as possible. And um, for all of those of you who haven't subscribed to the ICM channel, please go and do that. Um, it's a really easy way of seeing some of the updates. There's little build shorts on there. There's all kinds of stuff. So go ahead and do that. And thank you very much. Thank you.